Hello and welcome back to another law reading with me, Mione, for Final Fantasy XIV. This particular piece of law is on Undefining Beastmen, which is a chapter located within the Encyclopedia Eorzea Volume 2. So without further ado, Undefining Beastmen. Beastman, a most common term in the modern Eorzean lexicon, yet one that proves nigh impossible to define. Why have we Eorzeans chosen to brand a select few of Hydaelyn's children with an epithet that serves only to demean? What is gained by drawing this line betwixt a hypothetical us and a them? Does not this line merely serve to separate us further? To foster confusion and hate by veiling our eyes to the truth? The truth that these men we call beasts are no more beasts than we? What exactly is it then that separates man from beastmen? It cannot, for one, be the capacity for language, for those who make up these so-called beast tribes have also been undeniably classified as spoken, the sylphs and goblins having gone as far as adopting our own Eorzean as their preferred means of parlance. It cannot be culture, for as we have explored in these very publications, the beliefs and customs of these peoples are as rich as they are diverse, and as complex as any of those seen amongst the five races a similarly questionable term in its own right, suggesting that Hyur, Lalafell, Elizan, Makote, and Rogadin are somehow above the Garlians, the Aura, the Bangar, the Sikh, or the other myriad-spoken races that call Hydlin home. Many of the realm's most noticeable inventions prove their answer does not lie in a lack of skill or intelligence. The sprawling cobalt forges and refineries the Vilebrand, Ixali, dirigibles predating the realm's earliest airships. The goblins' colossal walking fortress, all of these arguably equal to or rivaling creations attributed by the small slice of civilization known as mankind, just as the answer does not lie in fairness of feature. For, if it did, then who could say that the Leonine Mikote are not beasts, or that the horns of an Aura make them more dragon than man, or a Rogadin is but a Gygus of diminutive stature? No, there exists no distinctly plausible linguistic, anthropological, or biological variances that might warrant a separate classification, yet one exists, and the poison of its twisted logic, conceived for the political and economical benefit of a select few, has permeated modern society, breeding animosity where there ought be none. In the 1559th year of the Sixth Astral Era, the Sultanate of Uldar, under heavy influence by the Syndicate, officially coined the term Beast Tribe, using it to describe those foreign entities whose interests directly oppose or interfere with those of the city-state. Amaljar were declared enemies of the people for opposing expansionist policies that saw the tribe's traditional homeland divided up by mining concerns. Citing the protection of local interests, evictions were issued to the Kikern, Goblin and Sylph traders, and all dealings with the victims of circumstance strictly prohibited. The syndicate had swiftly and effectively sown a national distrust in entire races so as to create a diversion that they may profit in the confusion. A distrust that remains yet to this day, and has become accepted amongst even our most educated. Yet, as stated above, if there truly is naught that separates our peoples beyond a term both of convenience and fostered in self-serving sanctimony, then does that not make us beasts for insisting that these, our brothers, are in some way beneath us? Are we Eorzeans so insecure that we must continue this practice, which historians will almost certainly look back upon with both disgust and disbelief? There are none in Eorzea so foolish as to suggest the wise Pajali leaders of Grudania might be of inferior stock. Yet if we are to compartmentalise the realm's denizens based on whether they are to be counted amongst the five races, then where does that leave the seed seers? Their fawn-like horns, their ceased ageing, their ability to commune with the elementals, all are traits more commonly associated with those peoples dishonoured with the beastman designation. And what of the dragons? If intelligence is to be measured by the volume of knowledge amassed over one's lifetime, then how might we conceive the intelligence of one who has lived a hundred lifetimes, a thousand? And how might we even begin to claim any manner of moral or intellectual superiority over such a being? 
If anything, the prevailing theory that Midgard Summer's first brood are not of Hydlin and came to this world from some distant star suggests that the dragons are neither man nor beastman, but instead something wholly unclassifiable by modern means. And this was signed a concerned editor. So this yet again was another piece of lore written in the style of an actual scholar writing about it in the game. It's very interesting to see and honestly the term Beastman is something they've looked at in the storyline before but I don't think it's really been as well explained or sort of analysed as in this particular lore article. You can obviously make various reflections on our own reality and the comparisons within but it's a really well written piece of lore and uh, hopefully you enjoyed listening to this so thank you kindly for watching and I'll see you all next time.